Hikers and backpackers of Reddit. What is the weirdest or creepiest thing you have found while hiking? I once found the diary of a homeless person. In it he wrote over and over again about how his third grade teacher was the only person to matter to him. The guy's bad writing made it even weirder. I was hiking in the whole rainforest on the Olympic Peninsula in Washington back in 03. I was trying to do this really snazzy hike from the ocean to MT. Olympus. Well, day one is a blast. Get everything accomplished. Day two. Fog. Fog as thick as anything you can imagine. I can't get a decent GPS fix, so I'm pretty much blind. But I know if I follow the whole river upstream, I'll get to one of the campsites I'm going for. Day goes by, and fog isn't clearing up at all. I get to a fairly big clearing and set up my tent. I grab a power bar and chill out as it starts going to the darkest black night I've ever experienced. I'm seriously a bit unnerved at the whole thing. Not scared as much as just anxious. About 2 in the morning, I start hearing this huffing noise. Like Darth Vader without the helmet on. My imagination starts to go freaky, and I reach for my flashlight. I pull the drawstring on the tent a little, very quietly, and poke my head out. Still dark as death. I hear the noise coming from maybe, maybe 5 feet to my right. At this point, I'm seriously rethinking my belief in Sasquatch. I poke my flashlight out and turn it on. I'm a few feet away from a massive Roosevelt elk, who lost his way in the dark as well. He sees the flashlight, bolts the other way, tags a tree and knocks himself clean out. I laid in the tent until I heard a groan, a bunch of commotion and the big guy grunt away. Ha ha ha. Poor guy. I hope he was okay. Glad he didn't murder you. Been waiting years for this question. Hiking alone at dusk doing a 5 mile loop in the Santa Monica Mountains in Los Angeles. I see another lone hiker approaching from the opposite direction. As he gets closer, I suddenly realize I know this person. It's the guy who played Jame Gum, aka Buffalo Bill in Silence of the Lambs. We get within 3 feet of each other. He looks at me. He sees the lightning bolt of recognition hit my face. His sad and resigned expression back said it all. Yes, I'm him. No, I'm not really a serial killer. I walked briskly by him anyway and didn't look back until I was a good 100 yards down the trail. The words paraudacia ad ignitum drawn in the snow in the absolute middle of nowhere, yet no footprints around them. The words were probably a few hours old. The closest translation we could find was through audacity towards the unknown. An old as dirt nudist hiker. No shoes. No flip flops. Just his pack, a hat, and a pair of trekking poles. Ran into him while I was day hiking one of rockiest, nasty section of the Appalachian Trail in Pennsylvania. He was super friendly, very talkative, and completely ignored any and all the questions about his lack of clothing. We walked together while he talked on and on for a few miles before I turned back and he carried on. Lefty if you're still out on the trails, stay weird. This is why Lefty won't be joining you on your trip. He only hikes nude. Bush walking in NSW, Australia. Me and my friend came across this weird platform looking thing made out of rocks. Later that year the cops arrested some bloke on suspicion of the murders of a series of backpackers who had gone missing over the course of a few years. And at the sites of several of the murders slightly off in the bush were these altars. The current affairs show runs footage of one. The trial and run up to it were all over the news. And yet it's that thing we found. The altars were typically no more than 300 yards from the victim's shallow graves. The guy who was arrested and subsequently convicted for the murders is Ivan Millett, Australia's worst serial killer. The cops are pretty sure that at least one other person was involved in the murders than the one now in jail for the crime. They just couldn't prove it. A man wearing a Ku Klux Klan hat with eye holes. Nothing else. Masturbating. I biked past him in the woods on the way home in 7th grade. Yes. It was Florida. Was fortunate enough to do a through hike of the it in 2012. Stopped by this guy's house known as the ice cream man right on the trail. An old man with thick glasses appeared at the door. Took me inside by the hand. And gave me orange cream popsicle as he read where the wild things are to me as we sat at his kitchen table. Weirdness level. The 7th of March 2010. He sounds like a nice guy. Plus he's known as the ice cream man. So I'm surprised you thought he would do something else. 
I've spent various stretches of time backpacking and camping throughout the US and seen some strange things. My brother and I came across an abandoned trailer town, of sorts, that scared the heck out of us. We also came across a rundown town, really, really small, out in New Mexico that seemed to have one person living in it. We based that on the fact that there was still some food and supplies there that were fairly fresh, perhaps just a few days old. Spent a couple days there trying to find the person, just to find out why they were staying in the town. Never found a person. We found the skeletal remains of an unknown number of deer, ranging from bucks to fawn, ensnared in a barbed wire fence that encompassed a 10x10 area in the Ozarks. A few of the skulls topped the fence posts, and there was one post in the middle of this area that had decaying deer bodies looked to be two, but there were only six hooves jutting out of the wreckage, wrapped around it. We found a dummy hanging from a tree while in the Yukon Territory of Canada, literally out in the middle of the woods. No reason for it, as far as we know. And we also came across a dead junkie on a road out of Olympia, obvious OD, as he had his arm tied and a needle in hand. Eyes were glazed over and staring straight ahead, mouth slightly ajar. Took my young children to a cave not far from the house. Popular spot, but we had the place to ourselves. You can walk through it in about 30 minutes without too much difficulty. It has a tiny exit at the opposite end. It was pretty muddy, so we decided to turn around and head back to the entrance. Halfway back, there was a lit candle sitting about 8 feet up one side. It was definitely not there on the first trip. I went into full on protective dad mode knowing there was likely someone hiding in the dark while we walked the rest of the way out. That is a taxing mode. 1000% alert and fully prepared to be dangerous. I was backpacking in New Hampshire and camped out for the night after a day hike. I wandered off from our fire to go take a pee and stumbled upon a circle etched into the ground with tuning forks surrounding the circle standing up straight. It looked like a creepy ritual circle and it bugged me out so I booked it back to the group. I was backpacking in Yellowstone above the tree line at about 10,500 feet. We are hiking on a ridge above a lake when all of a sudden we come across a horse skull. No body just the skull. Pretty cool looking. We get to our campsite not too far away from the lake near where we found the horse skull. When we get climbed down to the lake we find the body of the horse rotting on the edge of the lake with with negative film strips floating in the water and laying around the shore near the body. I wasn't hiking at the time, but when wandering in the woods one day in high school some of us found a severed bull's head tied to a tree by the horns. It was about 5 or 6 feet off the ground. It looked like it had been there a few days. I have no idea why someone would do something like this. Meth heads that we ran into on the trail. They threatened us with a knife and asked for money. My friends 357 that we had for bears came in handy. Over the years when I have told this story, many people haven't believed me, but it's true as the sky is blue. Me and my brother were hiking out in our new backwoods. We had just moved into a new house, and we stumbled upon a small open grass field. In the center of it, there was a person with a blue jacket crouched over. We thought it was a friend of ours that we had recently met, so I ran out to meet. I did not have my glasses on. But I got pretty close enough to see that it was a grown man leaned over the carcass of a deer, stabbing it with an unsharpened stick. He looked up, and saw me. I was pretty freaked out, so I turned around and yelled at my brother to run, and so we started to sprint as fast as we could back home. I believe you, enough as the internet will let me to. Gia Kaching hike deep in the New Mexico wilderness. Entered a clearing and saw a series of half-built crumbling concrete structures, rebar poking out of the concrete, and a dirt road approaching from the opposite direction of my hike. Footprints and some recent trash indicated people were still using the site. The whole thing seemed somehow post-apocalyptic and eerie. I was hiking alone, and for some reason the whole situation was freaking me out a bit. I decided to abort the hike and back out the way I hiked in found out later the site was used as a paintball tournament ground and designed on an urban warfare theme. There was absolutely no evidence of spent balls or paint on the concrete walls, which explains my confusion and the eeriness of finding half-destroyed buildings in the middle of nowhere. I work in the outdoor field and led trips regularly. I once led a trip to the top of MT. Stringer in NC. It's a tough climb to get to the top and about 6 miles from the nearest road. 
I was leading a group of 8 middle school kids and had one co-instructor. We were camping out on top of the mountain and it was a beautiful night with a full moon. The kids and the other co-instructor went to bed in their tents. I chose to spend the night in a hammock that night. I was really into a book I was reading so I stayed up and read until about 10.30pm. I turned my headlamp off to settle in for the night. Everything around me was rather bright from the moon and from the position I was in. I could see down the trail we had hiked to get to the top. I laid there enjoying the scenery and noticed something moving on the trail. Bears are common in the area so I perked up. As it got closer, I could tell it was a person. We were in the middle of nowhere and there was someone hiking up the trail with no headlamp or any gear. I was just frozen watching this person move closer to our camp. They arrived at the top of the mountain where we were and just stopped. I watched as what appeared to be a man surveyed our camp. I really could only see the outline of him. He stood there for what seemed like 30 minutes but may have been 10. He then turned, sat down under a tree facing our camp. He was sitting up in a way that I knew he wasn't trying to sleep. He just sat there staring at our camp. I had no idea what to do. I decided to wait it out. I waited, just staring at the man while he stared at my camp. This went on until about 3.30 am. Then, he stood up, took a moment to survey my camp a few minutes longer and then went back down the trail he came up on. I, to this day have no idea what that was all about but it freaked me out. I was paranoid that we were being followed for the rest of the trip. From that guy's point of view. Dang. Freaking kids camping in my freaking chill spot. Frick it, it's been a long day. I need the chill spot, kids or no kids. I found the old Super 8 camera up on Springer Mountain in Georgia. My mom had an old projector so we played the film and it turned out to be a couple having sex in an anthill. I did a solo bike tour across the US. So I wasn't exactly hiking. I was in eastern Kansas, pretty close to the Missouri border. And I spotted a park in a town that looked pretty secluded. So I decided to camp out there for the night. I started wheeling my bike over to the gazebo where I was gonna stay. When this dude pulls up in a beat up Ford Taurus. He gets out and comes over to me. Asking if I had any money. Telling me how his girlfriend ruined his credit and was now with another man. He said he was trying to make his way back to South Dakota. I got a really weird vibe from the dude. He kinda seemed like some sort of junkie. He asked me where I was headed, and he offered to drive me if I would pay for gas. I explained what I was doing, and that it kinda defeated the purpose. He looked dumbfounded, got back in his car and sped off through the park. I camped out there, and the next morning when I got up, his car was there, and he was just looking at me. I didn't even have breakfast, I just got the frick out of there. My buddies and I found a cooler in a gully while camping. It was dark and we left it, but authorities found it a few weeks later and there was a body in it. So that's cool. This old woman hiker in her 70s somehow saw us in reverse order through a wormhole or something. The first time we saw her she said oh, well hello again. I just passed it off as her being old, slightly senile. Then 30 minutes later, we saw her again and this time she just said hi as she passed us. I'm not even sure how she got there. She was going the opposite direction of us on the trail both times. If I had a twin I'd do this kind of crap all the time. I don't have a picture, but last year I hiked part of the Appalachian Trail in Tennessee when I came across a noose just hanging from one of the trees. Nothing was hanging from it. It was just there. Nothing was hanging from it. Nothing. Yet. Neither weird or creepy, but in middle school a bunch of friends and I were hiking when we're approached by a mute kid making the extended finger hole motion with his hands. We're not sure what's going on, so one of my friends yells he wants to our US. Get the knives. Afraid, we we all bust out our pocket knives and the poor kid runs back into the woods. A few minutes into the hike we spot an amorous couple furiously getting it on inside an old VW Beetle. We think the generous mute kid just wanted to share his pervy discovery with us. But we scared him off with knives. You have been visited by birthday cat. Liking this video in 3.58 seconds will do nothing. He's cute though. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.